My name is David Wilson. I am one of the founders of the Software Freedom School and an active teacher. And I would like to introduce the lovely and talented Aaron Brown. Hey. Yay. Welcome okay. to DevOps <laughs> Camp. And Sylvia Briscoe. And Sylvia Briscoe. Yay, lovely and talented. Welcome to the Software Freedom School. Software Freedom School. DevOps first Camp. First ever DevOps Camp Fireside Chat. Yeah. Emceed by my lovely wife, Heather Wilson, and Anthony Sayer. <laughs> We're going to start off with a what should be a simple question, but maybe it's not. Um, what is DevOps Camp? David or Aaron, you go. Oh uh, no, I'm sorry. What is what is DevOps? <laughs> <laughs> we should probably establish what this is. We're so freaking pro. But we'll take that out in post. Okay. We'll take that out in post. Okay, Aaron. What is DevOps? Um, I, I don't like trying to define DevOps because I think it means something different to everybody right now. Okay. We're moving towards uh, a future where there's going to be more certifications and more clarity around what different organizations think DevOps actually is. Okay. For me right now, there's two main components though. One is organizational, and that's an organization that is very um, holistic about their products. And rather than viewing their technology organization as development and operations and QA, uh, and the, the product team may or may not be in the technology department. Uh, I, I think that when an organization really embraces DevOps, they have the cross-functional product teams and really view you know, operations and uptime the responsibility of the team in the same way that delivering new features and keeping customers happy. Uh, you know, those all get an equal seat at the table. The second thing, DevOps as a role or as a, a more specific function, is really about bringing dev and ops together and sharing the responsibility, um, but, but really about the tools and about making things faster and more seamless and approaching the product from a very similar vein in the organization model, but uh, approaching the product with a what's best for the product rather than having ops charted to do ops and dev charted to do dev. To me, when I think of DevOps, I think of continuous integration and just using speed for safety, i.e. the rapid deployment of code. It's about speed and safety, uh, and its central theme is aligning business and IT. Uh, getting IT out of a head down and only focused on technology, but uh, back to head up and focused on business goals. David, do you think that this could lead to a future where we have business people who understand a lot more about technology and technology people who understand a lot more about business and a lot of blurring of lines, a lot of multi-discipline employees? Absolutely. I think that um, business is is now and, um, and will, to the extent that business wants to survive, thinking of IT not as a cost center, but as a force multiplier. Um, if my IT team is effective, I'm going to be more competitive in the mar marketplace. I'm going to be able to deliver my product faster. I'm going to be able to package my product better for my customers to be able to see it, to buy it, to receive it. Um, and I'm gonna be able to do that better than my competitors to exactly the extent that I think of my IT team as my weapon of choice. When it comes to DevOps Camp, this thing that we are doing in August, Yay. What yes. so what technologies are you, got, are you gonna be featuring at this? What we're gonna try and cover is really the end-to-end -end pipeline in software development. And that is from the genesis, the code that everyone writes. Uh, with Git, we're going to talk about programming and scripting a little bit with um, Bash and Python and some of the different tools there. 
Uh, JQ is one that systems administrators are going to need if they're going to start writing bash scripts that are talking to APIs. Um, and we're going to get into CI with uh, GitLab, GitLab and okay. GitLab CI. And we're going to talk deployments. We're going to talk uh, Docker and Kubernetes. Those are not, to me, those are not just buzzwords. That, that is the new way of doing things. Uh, we're going to talk about all these things in somewhat abstract ways. It's going to be very hands-on with all the technologies that we cover, but we're going to teach the theories that will allow you to take, uh, if you're not using Kubernetes, if you want to use a different container orchestration technology, a lot of the stuff that we're going to teach should be applicable. Um, monitoring and logging are other big ones. So uh, probably Sensu, maybe Prometheus, but again, uh, the the knowledge that we impart should be usable with either one. Elk stack is ubiquitous. You see that everywhere. So we're going to try and cover that one too if we've got time to get it in. How much of this would you say any of you are using on your jobs day to day? Day to day, it's still a really small percentage. So it's yeah. more ramping up on the learning side. Um, we have a big movement to try to educate all of our customers. Um, I work at F5 Networks. So right. We're educating everybody on NetOps and being able to deploy all of our hardware, not only in virtual editions, right, but also um, in a more, I, would, I wouldn't call it a CI cycle, but automatically deploy infrastructure um, with Ansible scripting, okay. um, using uh, a lot of uh, Git, GitLab is what we use, um, and even supporting a lot of this. So that's kind of what's really different um, about integrating uh, any of the, the NetOps is that it's supported by our own uh, department, right? F5 itself supports the scripts and supports the automation. It's not like you write your code here on your own. It's like, here, we'll give you a starting point and we'll help you do it. Sure. So it's a bigger and bigger piece. Uh, okay. Not not every day, but all of it uh, over time. What? <laughs> Why are you making that face? Uh, <laughs> so um, we've, did I cut you off? No, you didn't at all. Okay, good. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm making that face because you're you're not so much about the container orchestration platforms yet. Oh, I, I you're right. I haven't done uh, <laughs> I have not done container orchestration, but um, I am using uh, builds every day, uh, build automation, um, deployment automation, uh, testing. Um, I use GitLab CI. I depend on it. Um, I have uh, both automatic and manual jobs uh, that deploy automatically to uh, dev and then our test and prod environments are both um, manual deployments so but they're one click deployments so i know from deployment to deployment exactly what process was used to deploy the product where previously we had been doing manual deployments like a lot of shops still are and so you don't know whether joe deploys exactly the same way as fred but as soon as you have Joe and Fred just kick off a script, you know that they're doing it exactly the same way. Uh, and that's that's what um, I've been able to do at my job. Uh, so yeah, similarly, I'm doing pretty much all that stuff. Um, I've actually, one of the things, one of the technologies that I, I skipped over was configuration management. Um, I, I have a decent amount of experience with Puppet and Chef, but for DevOps Camp, I think we're going to focus more on Ansible. Uh, that said, CM is one of the things that I, I don't really do on a day-to-day -day basis anymore. I think that that has kind of fallen out of favor in my environments due to Docker and what you're able to do with Docker configurations. Okay. Um, I've been using container orchestration platforms for probably three years, but I am just switching over to Kubernetes. I have more experience with Mesos and Marathon, but uh, Kubernetes is pretty awesome. Docker, I love, um, you know, cloud compute. That's another thing I didn't mention, um, but we're gonna talk about cloud technologies and infrastructure as code as well. For any of you who work at a company who maybe has a lot of legacy IT, are you, are you seeing rapid adoption of DevOps culture in your organizations, or is this something that is still a challenge? Oh, I think the culture is a huge challenge. I, I think the culture is actually a bigger challenge than the technologies. Agreed. Um, I, I think that companies 
think they, they see a tool and they say, oh, we know how to implement tools, and they try to just implement the tool without changing their behavior around their workflows and their, their practices. So that is definitely one of the things. It's, it's going to be potentially a little unusual for a tech camp, but we're going to talk about organizational structures and um, what it looks like from a good organizational approach to DevOps and how to be a more agile, nimble organization. Uh, but with the understanding that we're really targeting this course at technical people. So it's going to approach that from the idea of, you know, as a technical person, what can I do to help change the culture of my organization? Successful navigation of the eighth layer of the OSI. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. I've heard the eighth layer before. Um, if I can comment, so yes. I have a lot of service provider customers, and it's kind of a mishmash of adoption, but what I do see everybody doing is creating a separate cloud team on top of what their usual infrastructure team was. Right. And so sometimes it's very much a top-down approach, right? Yeah. So you've got the labels, right? You've got the DevOps manager, and you've got the people, and then you do have a little bit of confusion as to what they're going to do for a lot of those legacy sure. applications and how those are going to migrate over. So very much dependent on the organization. Mm -hmm. um, still seeing a ton of private cloud, right? Once again, service providers, they want to build their own. Um, a lot of edge stuff just with peering and deciding to do maybe not full cloud, but some sort of uh, edge computing or differentiation at the edge that um, then takes you to the cloud. Just a whole lot of different things happening in that regard. For anyone who might be a student who's thinking about attending DevOps camp, can anyone talk about some of the benefits that they might achieve from attending? David? Well, um, I, I think that the bulk of the benefit is going to be in technical tools. That's very easy to deliver. I think that the, um, the political stuff is, is maybe going to get done outside of class and between modules, and we're going to talk about strategies for, for navigating politics. But man, are we going to do a lot of tech. We are going to soak in containers. <laughs> There's no dirty word in there. I can totally say that. Even if we were on national television. There's I nothing totally dirty about that. We are going to soak in containers for know why we're days. days. <laughs> what I always get the most out of camp is all the chat in between all the technology. So talking yeah. about applicability of technology and then putting it all together, right? So you're not taking yeah. a Kubernetes class or and Ansible class, you're mixing everything together and creating a CI pipeline and asking all the questions from people in different organizations and getting all those perspectives. And I love the immersion part of it. I mean, getting four days to do a class, it's really a big luxury and it really allows your brain to soak in the containers. <laughs> soaking in. <laughs> so, so when, and, and anybody watching that's, that's, that know, knows a little bit about SFS knows we've got five years of Linux camp that we're doing this first DevOps camp on. And the, the big thing that everybody comes out saying is, well, A, it's, it's awesome because we get away from the city, but B, it's awesome because we put everything together. We don't study things in isolation. And that turns out to be huge, taking all of the things and putting them together into a coherent um, story, for lack of a better word. It, we see the natural place for Docker. We see the natural place for Kubernetes. Sure. We see how, how CI actually functions as a pipeline to deliver awesome stuff from a crazy, fast, brilliant developer to a hungry um, customer. Yeah, I, I mean, to build on that, it's one thing to teach Git, but when you teach Git with CI, so you can see how someone checks in code and it, it automatically gets built, uh, there's more value there. But then when you can teach that with Docker sure, and show right. that I check in the code and it automatically gets built and tested and you know deployed as a Docker container, and if you can add Kubernetes into that where you're deploying all the way to hmm. your infrastructure. So um, some immersion where you get to see how all these tools work together, not just one in isolation and then another class later in isolation, but all of these. <laughs> This yes. is a real <laughs> campfire with real smoke and real ash. All right. Well, the ash is not coming through on camera. We're all about reality. This is right. reality. 
on on video it doesn't look that bad. Like you can't see all the ash Just that's accumulating on all like you guys. <laughs> all right, so for anyone who wants to attend, it if they are already employed in tech, what we have seen from doing Linux Camp over the years is that it, it can be easy, depending on the organization you worked for, to get your company to pay for you. Um, what are some ways that someone could talk their boss into paying for them to attend this? I have to mention my favorite strategy. My favorite strategy is to tell my boss, I'm going to this. Would you like to pay for it? Okay. And So just show them some determination. Now, and that now he has a choice. Or she. Well, no, my boss is a he. <laughs> but, if, but if my boss was a she, then she would have a choice. Yeah. 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 I, that's my I, that's my favorite. Go. <laughs> I think it's incredibly reasonably priced. Four days for what's the list? Twenty four hundred dollars, right? Twenty six fifty if you pay in full by, by July Independence 4th. Day. Independence Day. Yeah. Otherwise, it's twenty eight hundred. So 2800 max, and that covers room and board, and that covers all the technologies that we just discussed. And there is after hours chat on technology. And if you guys think you're going to go out there and like study for six hours, <laughs> 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 try eight to ten hours. <laughs> amazing Until food. Did we mention amazing there, food? Yeah, yeah, the food is just. Did you? No, no, <laughs> we, did, we didn't it's, yet. Heather does our awesome. cooking, and it's you know hot breakfast every day. Uh, All the coffee you can drink. Cookies, <laughs> warm cookies in the afternoon. <laughs> okay, my next question. You guys, so, so go can ahead. I, can I jump on there too? Yes. Uh, David and I were talking the other day about, you know, it seems like when companies buy a big licensing package, whether it's, you know, Microsoft or Oracle, whatever it is, it, it's easy to tack training onto that. And that can be a lot harder with open source software. But I, I think it's important to make the case to your boss that rather than continuing to hire people, if you can spend 2800 bucks on a class that is going to, you know, it, it, it's, it might be software that you're going to figure out on your own over the course of six months or a year. But this course will, this camp will help jumpstart that knowledge and that implementation by six months. So rather than hiring somebody else, uh, rather than not really, you know, feeling your way through it, 2800 bucks is half the price of an equivalent boot camp pretty much anywhere else. Yeah. Um, and this, this includes the room and board. So it's a phenomenal deal. Um, and I, I think that selling it to your boss as that, you know, incremental spend, but that is going to save you six months worth of fumbling around. Uh, it, it's a good sell. Okay. It might be worth $2,800 to head off like one mistake. Right. Right. Build that framework. Because yep. technology mistakes, mistakes very are expensive. Yeah, it could yep. be millions. Um, you guys have answered some of this already, but I want to go ahead and throw this out. Is it with Google and with YouTube and all sorts of online resources? Anyone could go online and just study day and night by themselves in the comfort of their own home and learn whatever they want to learn. Why should they pay to go to DevOps Camp? This is so much more fun, right? <laughs> I mean, fun. Oh my gosh, so is this fun. more fun? Seriously. Uh, also, interacting with people in a community of helpful, helpful, very helpful uh, <laughs> mentors. I, I'm a big believer in the mentor mentee relationship. Um, I I think there's a lot of that that goes on here. Um, Some okay. books have no puns at all in them. <laughs> no. <laughs> Nothing but punny at, at the DevOps camp. It's a tragedy. I mean, I'm, right. a, I'm a hiring manager, so I'm trying to train people that I can then recruit. So right. it's a little bit That's right. from my perspective. So some of these teachers at this DevOps camp are also hiring managers, but all of them are, are people who work in the industry every day using these tools. Um, that's a very good point. Um, very quickly, let's talk about prereqs for the class and what a typical day at DevOps camp looks like. Um, David, go. Uh, the fully, well, how about I handle the prereqs and you can talk about the typical day. Uh, okay, go. Do okay. It. So prereqs, uh, we're looking for people who are experienced with technology. Um, it's, this class is going to move quick. There's a ton of material. Um, we need people who are familiar with a pretty broad spectrum of technologies 
and how IT works. Uh, we're going to try to approach things so that if you've got a background in development or a background in operations, we're going to try and make it all make sense either way. So it's really more about having that experience and that broader base of technology than having any one specific requirement met. David, give us a, a walk through a day at DevOps Camp. All right. Uh, some folks rise with the sun. Some folks totally don't rise with the sun. Um, Heather always puts out a delicious breakfast for us. Uh, and at a few minutes before nine, we play some weird song. I don't think we've picked it for DevOps camp yet. Um, then promptly at nine o'clock, we dive into material. Uh, we follow the SFS method. I won't say strictly, but we we follow it. Um, and what that what that means is that you get a short lecture that describes concepts. You get a demonstration of exactly what you're supposed to be doing next, so that you've seen all those pieces go together. And then you get an opportunity finally to get together with your partner and play in your pretend company and actually build one of them okay. there. Um, we do that four to six times a day. There's delicious food that happens in the middle. Sometimes we take a little break, watch an eclipse or take a hike or, uh, or take a bike ride. Um, and, and play Frisbee, play Frisbee. Uh, <laughs> and, 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 and then we do more labs. And then we do more labs. <laughs> and then we have more delicious food. And then sometime between six and eight, people's eyes start to glaze over and the blood drains out of their heads. Right. And the instructor to decides to have pity and, and we switch to uh, scotch Fireside and board games. Scotch. <laughs> scotch and board games. I don't, th I don't think we can say scotch. And lively discussion. You can say scotch. I don't, I don't know. I'm sure we can. Can scotch we say that? It's okay. already set. All right. <laughs> it's not illegal. Go, all right. Sylvie gets the next question. Oh, boy. Is it a good one? Uh, Whatever it is. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw out the women in tech thing. Oh, there you go. Um, for <laughs> diversity and inclusion, I mean, what could someone get out of this who is not the standard white male that we typically <laughs> see in these kinds of careers? But more like the brown female? <laughs> yes. Um, I think it's example. all the same things plus the, the camaraderie. I mean, I feel like I showed up to the first camp and uh, fortunately I saw Heather first and she <laughs> she's so super friendly and had some nice food for me. Uh, but. <laughs> But the camaraderie, like working right. in a group, asking all the questions. I would, uh, and, and I would think if, to... if this was something that was not very familiar to you, no matter who you are, going and immersing yourself in something like this. The full immersion helps a ton to not just take a class and right. walk away because it doesn't allow you to stay in your bubble, right? right. If you take a class in a conference room, you're up in a building, you're sure. working on the side, you may take your breaks even on your own, you may or may not go with the group, here you're like... You have to interact, you have to meet the people, and then you can get on the mailing list and sure. visit with us more often. And now you can fun. take that back to your job and you can start talking about what you've done, what you know, and you can be in the conversation, I think. You can follow in a lot, lot of these more things that are conversation, right. even the non technical, nerdy conversations, you can pick all right. those things up. <laughs> <laughs> this is how these kinds of barriers get broken, yeah. I think. Is that and you and have to go games. learn this stuff. Yeah. Get in, get immersed in this kind of culture, and I, and then you can go back to your job and, and start breaking these kinds of barriers. Absolutely. Going um, back to the eighth layer, you can steer those conversations. There you go. Exactly. You, you can ask you questions. You come out. You're so deep. You can, yeah. You can steer those okay. conversations. Say, maybe we should. You done? No. Maybe we should test our product before we deploy it this time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so, okay, guys. Are we, are we out of? I think we're out of time. Nope, we have one more question for Sylvia. Okay. You had talked once about um, fitting in, but you had changed the verbiage, I think, oh, to belonging. Does that, oh, does that ring yeah. a bell? Yeah, we did have that conversation. Can you expand a little more on that? So I have to tickle some brain cells, but um, I guess fitting in is being a part of the group and, and flowing with the group, and you might have to jog my memory. Belonging is more like... Oh, you have more of a say? Like we would miss you. <laughs> so, you miss so Sylvia, you first, you came to 
to do, uh, Linux camp, but no classes prior to that, correct? No official classes. I mean, I, you know, I'm majored in telecom, but I've always been, uh, David talks about the eighth layer. I've been layer one through three, so just up to routing. So it was uh, very much needed to refresh on the whole lot of stuff. And, and, uh, and yeah. now you're you're and now completely I immersed. I feel immersed in DevOps. I feel like I can have an intelligent conversation with all my customers about it, and even the people who are from the development side, and at least understand and have a good framework for what they're trying to do and what the final accomplishment is. So throughout DevOps camp and with a lot of the training in between, right, because we have meetings where we meet um, twice a month fairly mm -hmm. regularly, uh, it has helped develop a lot of dialogue and a lot of structure around all of the technologies that I'm around all the time. Excellent. Well, yeah. All right. Yes, good to belong. Any, any more questions? No, nope, I think we covered it. Um, any questions from the participants? No, I think I we've, all I think we've, out. yeah, I think yeah. we've got them. Okay. Oh, um, oh. <laughs> Where's it located? Excellent. Oh, good, good question, question good Connor. Question. DevOps camp is going to be at Snow Mountain, same as all the Linux camps that we've done, at Snow Mountain Ranch. It's a YMCA camp that is in Colorado's beautiful Fraser River Valley between the Winter Park Ski Resort and Grand Lake, which is the genesis of the Colorado River. So it's a gorgeous location. We're all going to be sharing a cabin with how many bunks? A, a, a giant lodge, I would yeah. say. It's more than a cabin. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's big. We're, we're only going to do 12 this time, but if we wanted to really wedge people in, I think we can get 16. <laughs> so where do we go to find find registration for Software Freedom School's DevOps Camp? Sofree.us and click on DevOps Camp. Excellent. Go, go to sofree.us, that's our website, and click on DevOps Camp. It's front and center. And there is also a boss page on our website if you need further information to help your hiring managers pay for it. It starts on a Saturday, so be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's, that's also ammo to use with your boss. You're giving two days if he can give, if she or he or she can give two days. Yep. All right. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so, thank you. so much. Here's our MC. <laughs> All right. Hey, thanks, guys. Uh, I really appreciate the Q&A. And, and I'm Heather Wilson. Thanks, guys. Bye, guys. We're out.